All right, are you there? Exodus chapter 28, verse 33 through 35. Oh, I got a good word today. I'm excited about this. This is new, something I've never heard. It says, and upon its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem. Are you all there? It's Exodus chapter 28, verse 33 through 35. It says, uh, and bales of gold, I'm in verse 33, the last half, and bales of gold between them all around, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe all around. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sounds will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. Amen. Now, if you've been in this church for some time, I have done a lot of teaching on the garments of the high priest, right? Now, I'm going to show you a picture of what the high priest looks like. This is for the Jamie right here. There he is. <laughs> Glad Jamie. <laughs> and if you look at the, the garments of the high priest, the, uh, the picture that I'm showing you all, uh, you know, we think, well, man, you know, why do they dress like that? You know, why do they wear things like that? But I want you all to know that everything that they wore symbolizes something. Are you all with me? And this is something sometimes that's overlooked. Now, those that are watching online, uh, sorry, I don't have the picture, but just Google it in the words of Brother Edward. Google high priest, and uh, you'll look at the picture on Google. There's tons of pictures. So no particular picture, just look at anyone that deals with the Bible. But. So he says the high priest. This is the picture of the high priest. And notice that on the his chest, he has the ephod. And the ephod has all the different stones, right? All the different stones represent the what? Does anybody know? There's 12 stones. I'll give you a hint. It's 12 stones. So what do you think it represents? Yes, my grandma's right. It represents the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. All represents the 12 tribes. Or can, I, can I give you a little... A little Side note, there's 12 stones on the priest of the high garment. Do the, the, you know the same color stones that are on the garment are the same color stones that are in the New Jerusalem at the end of the book of Revelation, which tells you that it's not literal stones in the New Jerusalem. It's pictures of people of the new Israel because it's using Old Testament language. You understand what I'm saying? That's why it's important for you to learn the Old Testament, because when you see emerald, all of these different things in the in the New Jerusalem, Grandma, it all symbolizes that which is in the Old Testament. Amen. Why are they on his chest? Because God keeps us in his heart. Amen. And so he wearing he's wearing the ephod, which is the gold, the 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 uh, twelve tribes, right? And then he has the the white linen, the white linen we've talked about that represents what righteousness. It represents holiness. Do you know that the linen crystal, it had to be very uh, light fabric. They could not sweat. Why? Why could they not sweat as priests? Because our work as Christians should not be laborious. It's not a laborious. We're not, how many of y'all know we're all priests, right? Y'all know that the Bible says uh, in the book of 1 Peter, it says that we are all priests unto God, Right? So the gar the white represents uh, righteousness, and it was a type of fabric where they would not sweat. Why? Why? Because our because God doesn't want our job to be laborious. The Christian life, Grandpa, is not to is not to be a life that's heavy, and weighed down and burdensome, but it's a one that is of of ease, of relaxation. But they were said earlier, it's one of rest. Come unto me, Jesus said, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. So so all of these, so it represents rest. Amen? And then he has the turban, which is the head. And I'm not going to talk about that because I'm not going to give you all of them tonight. But I've taught on all these. It rep and he, on, the ball, on his forehead, the, the little emblem says, holy unto the Lord. I'll give you this one. Holy unto the Lord. Are y'all ready? This is going to blow you away. Are y'all ready? Above his head, 
it says holiness to the Lord. Why does it say that? Because how many of y'all know that the high priest represents us to God? Okay? The priest represents God to you. Watch this. But the prophet represents, uh, no, yes, the, but, but, the, but the prophet also represents the people to God. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm backwards. The, <laughs> let's say this again. The prophet is the uh, from God to the people. I'm sorry. That's what the prophet is. Help me out, Pastor Jamie. And then the high, the priest represents the people to God. So w- in the Old Testament, Michael, when they wanted to go to God, they could not all go to God. They had to send the priest. It would be like you saying, you and Jamie go to God, tell me what he says, and come back. It would be the priest, right? And on his forehead, he had this emblem that said, holiness unto the Lord. Why? Because in God's eyes, the high, watch this, in God's eyes, the high priest is thought were holy to him. In other words, you are not accepted based on your thoughts. You're accepted based on the priest's thoughts. And who's our high priest today? Jesus Christ. See, your thoughts are holy because he is holy. And he lives in you. Especially, I have a bad thought. It don't matter. What does he think? Especially, I'm sick. It don't matter. What does he think? Why? Because his thoughts are holy. Man, I thought y'all would be more excited. Maybe y'all are tired this week. This is good stuff tonight. So it's all, so your so his thoughts are holy to the Lord. He represents you to the Lord. Jesus Christ is our priest who goes to the Lord. And his, if his thoughts are holy, then our thoughts are holy. The Bible says in the, in the book of 1 John, it says what? As Jesus is, so are we where? In this life, in this world. It's, it's, it's not when we get to heaven. It's not, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. No, it's not when I fly away. It's right now, right where I live. Right now, you're acceptable to the Lord. Right now, you're seated with Christ. Right now, you are holy and righteous before the Lord. Amen, somebody. Why? Because Jesus is holy. See, our identity, Diane, is not in ourselves. It's in Christ. For Christ is our priest. Christ is our righteousness. Christ is our holiness. Amen. Christ is our salvation. Amen. I'm on somebody. I feel like a Sunday morning coming on me, Jamie. <laughs> so if Christ is accepted, you're accepted. Amen. That's why I always tell you know this cross we got behind me. It's not there to look pretty, which it is. It is pretty, but it's to remind you of what Christ has done, Amen. so that you can say, "Am, am I holy?" Yes. Why? Because the cross made a way out of no way. And I think, and, and that makes me rest easy. Because even when you fail, he still sees you holy. Why? Because my high priest is holy. See, the Bible says this. The Bible says that the priest under the Old Testament, Diane, they would die. And then a new priest would have to come. But under the new covenant, the Bible says that Jesus is a high priest who lives He's one priest that will never die. Amen, somebody. We thank God for that. All right. So there's more I could go into, but we're not going to go into it. So he's, he's, he's a high priest. But I want you to go to the next picture, Pastor Jamie. Because notice that we read in Exodus, the scripture that we read, it said what? It had to have a pomegranate and a bell. Now notice the order. Pomegranate, bell. Pomegranate, bell. Pomegranate, bell. Are y'all with me? Now, this is not insignificant, right? Now, watch this. I want you to look at the scripture that we read. If everybody's watching online, I want you to go back to the scripture that I read. And I want you to look at verse 35. Pastor Jamie, go back to the first slide of the first, of the first scripture. Look what it says. 
And uh, yeah, 35. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers. There you go, Annie. Yes, when he ministers. What is to be upon Aaron? Go back, Jamie, to this picture, the, the, the pomegranate picture. These. Every time Aaron ministers, he is to have a pomegranate and a bell. A pomegranate and a bell. Are y'all with me today? All right. I know I'm being repetitive, but y'all know how I preach. All right. Now, what do the pomegranates represent? I'm going to tell you. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy, I believe, is just a few books over. After Exodus, go over. I think it's Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy. Am I right, Pastor Jamie? All right. If you're being blessed online, please share, like the video, let me know you're being blessed. All right? I'm doing a teaching tonight. Give us some thumbs up. My thumb don't go up. It don't work that good. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8. De no, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Did I say 28? Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Again, we're looking at the high priest garments, but we're focusing on the hymn where he says they have to have a pomegranate and a bell. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6 through 10. Now look what it says. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a land, a land of brooks, Brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hill. A land of wheat and barley and of vine and of fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive and of honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. In which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Amen. Justin asked a question. He said, how he said, we're watching, but we keep asking, how do I know? How do you know this stuff? Uh, I think that's what he meant to say. Right, Pastor Jamie? How, it, they want to know how you know this stuff. It's a good question. It's Bible study. We could take questions. One of the ways that you understand what something means is that you see how that word continues to be carried out throughout the New Testament, all right? So if, if you, if you want to know how healing how healing is, is used in the Old Testament, you look at the first time it's mentioned, and you read every scripture that talks about healing. You're with me? So I hope that answers your question, uh, Justin. So in a, in, a, in a short few seconds. So notice this. When, when, how many of y'all know that Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they were going to go into the promised land, right? Y'all know that? I've said that a thousand times here. And notice what he says here. He says that when they come into the promised land, it's going to be a land with milk and honey. They're going to have brooks, valleys, but they're also going to have pomegranates, right? So what? So pomegranates are represent blessing, okay? They represent blessings, abundance. Are y'all with me? How do we know that? Because the, the, the promised land was a land of blessing, was it not? It was the land that God was going to give them to. How many of y'all know today that we're in the promised land, right? The Bible tells us in Hebrews, it says that we have entered that rest, that promised land that Israel did not enter. The, the first generation did not enter into the promised land because of their unbelief. So we're not talk, So in the Old Testament, they were talking about a literal land, but it only represented a spiritual land that we have in the Holy Ghost. Come on. When you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you are living in the promised land. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hey, man, amen. The, the neighbor saying, it ain't Sunday morning. Why is he so loud? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Slow down. All right. So it, so it's a, it, it represents blessing. Let me show you something else. And then we're going to get into this. It's going to bless you. Are you all ready? Go to the Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon is right after, uh, I think it's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and then Song of Solomon. 
<laughs> I gotta test test my Old Testament quotations, Sammy. Let me even let me know when I'm looking at my table of contents. See if I'm right. Jamie, I'm right, Pastor Jamie. Can you believe it? So it's Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and then the Song of Solomon. How many of you know this is a love story? Yeah. It gets real graphic. It says her breasts are beautiful. Come on, Jesus. Sound like the bold and the beautiful and the young and the restless. Hallelujah. <laughs> a little joke, a little joke. So. The, the, the story of the Song of Solomon is really a picture of Christ and his church. The Shulamite woman is not loved in her community. Nobody loves her because she's dark-skinned. And the Bible says there's a man that loves her. And then she's looking for the man. She said, where is my beloved? My beloved is this and this and this. And then the, the, the man, the lover, her lover, she calls him lover. Her lover responds to her and tells her how beautiful she is. And notice what he tells her in verse 3. Song of Solomon 4, chapter 4, verse 3. It says, your lips are like a strand, a strand of scarlet, and your mouth is lovely. Your temples behind your veil are like a piece of pomegranate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. I'm getting excited already. Y'all know how I get. Now, let me say this to you, because I do want to be honest about this translation here. There are different, how many of y'all know there's different translations of the Bible, right? There's the NIV, King James, the English Standard Version. There's all different translations, okay? Now, some translations translate this as temple, what, what we read, right? How many of you know your temple's right here in your head, right? Okay. But other translations Translated as your cheeks. Okay? So, is it cheeks or is it temples? I'll let you decide. Okay? Now, I'm going to go with temples. I'm going to tell you why. I'm just going to tell you why I go with temples. Because it says that her temple is like that of a pomegranate. Are y'all with me? Now, watch this. Pomegranates are fruits. They're full of seeds, right? And when you open a pomegranate, I should have got a picture of a pomegranate, Pastor Jamie, but I didn't. When you open a pomegranate, I believe it's like red in the inside. And it has a lot of seeds in it. But it's a fruit, right? So watch this. The priest had to have a pomegranate on his feet. He had to have pomegranates on his feet. Okay, let me help y'all. So what do the pomegranates represent? Are you ready? Remember their fruit? They represent blessing, right? And they are supposed to be at his feet. Look at the picture again, Pastor Jamie. Can you look at the picture? Look at that. They're at his feet. Everywhere his feet go, the pomegranates go. Everywhere, the, everywhere he goes, the bells go. Are y'all with me? Now watch this. So what do they represent? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25. Go ahead, Pastor Jimmy. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, I mean, yeah, kindness, gentleness, uh, faithfulness. Oh, there's that faithfulness we talked about before we started, right? Self-control. Against there is no such law. Now watch those, Grandma. Watch this, Grandma. Verse 24 and verse 25. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So at the high priest, so the, the pomegranates represent the fruits of the spirit. In other words, everywhere you walk as a priest, you need to be walking in the fruits of the spirit. In love, 
joy, peace, long-suffering. If it's, listen, now remember we saw in Song of Solomon, it represents, it said that her temple was like pomegranate. What is, what is our temple? What's in our temple? Our mind. Our mind, right? What is, what is Romans 8, 6 say? Go ahead, Pastor Jamie. Do I have that there? Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What does the Spirit give us? It's fruit. Okay, I'm going to blow some of y'all away. Are y'all ready? Jamie, go back to Galatians. Actually, I don't believe you. I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I said that a pomegranate, when you open it, it's actually full of more seeds, right? Okay. Now, Grandpa, I'm not a scholar. I don't consider myself a scholar, even though y'all may. But one scholar that I read, and one scholar that I heard, not read, but I heard him say this. He said that when it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, that it's not saying, let me say this, notice the language. It, does, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. Because if we're talking about more than one fruit, you would say fruits of the Spirit. But it says the fruit of the Spirit, which would articulate what? One singular fruit. One singular fruit, but with many seeds. Why? Because it's love. Joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. It's like a pomegranate. When the Lord gives you his spirit, it's, it's a pomegranate that's full of seeds. What? Of love, peace, joy, long-suffering. Oh, I, I, I feel this tonight. Now, are you ready? Watch this. Write this down. There are nine fruit of the Spirit. I want you to remember that. Just write that down somewhere or just l make a note of that. There are nine fruits of the Spirit. I said fruits, plural. I did, but that's not right, but y'all get the point. If I say fruits instead of fruit, just don't, argue, don't, don't correct me. Y'all know what I mean, okay? <laughs> okay. Now. So picture, the picture again, Pastor Jamie. Please. So we have the pomegranates. So we have a fruit, a bell, a fruit, a bell, and a fruit. So I get that, right? Now what do the bells represent? Are you ready? Go. Now, let me say this. Pay attention to the pattern, right? Fruit. Bell, fruit. Are y'all with me? Now, what was naturally believed, now this is not in the Bible, okay? This is, a, this is something that historians believe. They believe that the reason why the bells were added was because when the high priest would go into the temple, Diane, he could possibly die if he wasn't obedient to the Lord. And Remember, I told y'all that only the priest could go to the Lord, right? I used Michael. I said, Michael sends me and Jamie, right? So only the priest could go to the Lord. And so in other words, Diane, if they didn't hear no more bells, then that means he was dead. And so what some believe, Patrick, is that he would have a rope tied around his foot so that when he went into the presence of the Lord, if he dropped dead, they could drag him out because, Diane, if, if, if me and Jamie fail in the presence of the Lord, you and Hector can't come and get us because y'all going to drop dead the moment you step behind the curtain. So the only way we can say, hey, Pastor Larry and them are disobedient, we'll drag them out. OK, now that's not in the Bible, but that's what was believed. So in other words, let me say this. As long as the bells were ringing, life was going. But the moment the bell stopped. It meant no more life. Oh, I want you to remember that. The moment the bell stopped, there was no more life. Okay, are y'all with me? So what do the bells represent? 
They represent. Okay, y'all, hold on. <laughs> what do bells represent? Ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This, are y'all excited? This is blessing y'all? First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Oh, this, but this blessed me, Pastor Jamie, when I read this. Now, you, you're not going to catch it right away, but, but, I, but I'm going to show you a different translation. Watch this. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So, he's, oh, so he says, if I don't have love, I'm just a noisy symbol. Okay, now are y'all ready for this? Look at this translation. Go to the next translation. Same scripture, uh, Annie, but a different translation. I may be able to speak the languages of human beings and even of angels, but if I have no love, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. No. It's not love. Mary said it's love. I said no. If so, watch this. If all you do is prophesy and speak in tongues, but you have not love, you're nothing but a bell. So the bell represents the what? The gifts of the spirit. Because if you're speaking in tongues. But you don't have love, then you're just a bell ringing. So the bells represent the gifts of the Spirit. So when the high priest was wearing his garment, what did he have? The fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. He had a pomegranate. And he had a bell. But let me tell you what a lot of people want. They want bells, but no pomegranates. They want God to use them to preach, but they're mean Christians. So you can't prophesy with over people out of anger. You have to have the love of Christ. If there's anything that I have to have as a pastor is the love of Christ. Because church people frustrate you. Because as a pastor, there may be people in my church that are not living right. And when I see them not coming to church, not living right, it grieves me. Because I'm your pastor. But if I don't have love in my heart, Annie, it could make me a better pastor. And when I see them, I'm not going to have no more love for them. Because I'm letting my emotions get the best of me. So I could start preaching. I could start ringing my bell and not have no pomegranates. You'd be a noisy bell. But you can't have a bell without a pomegranate. My message to you tonight is this, and here's how it applies to you. God wants to use everybody in this church. God wants to use everybody that is watching. Every one of us have a gift or a calling. Whether it's singing, whether it's praying, whether it's cooking for people, whether it's just loving people and helping people, whatever you love to do to help people is what God has called you to do. But you can be doing all the right things with the wrong attitude. And what God wants us to have, church, is to have love, have peace, have joy. Jamie, go back to the picture because I want to say something else. If you tell me, Pastor, I can prophesy and I can sing in tongues, you have two bells, then you should at least have two pomegranates. Are you getting my point? If you say, Pastor, I, I can preach, then you should, so you have a pomegranate. So you have a bell. But why is it when you preach, you don't have a pomegranate? 
why isn't there no fruit in your life? Because some, some of the most, if we're not careful, guys, let me tell you something. When God starts using us, we can get very prideful and very arrogant. And it becomes about us and not the people. And I'm telling you, Crystal, what I've learned as a pastor is it's not about me. It's about serving the people. It's about washing the people's feet. And what I want to encourage you guys is, is, you know what? When people come through the door or when we're doing stuff as a body of Christ, that we have love for one another. That we pray for one another, and we and if you're gonna if you're gonna pray for somebody, you say, Pastor, I feel led to pray for somebody. Well, then pray with them. Use your gift for the Lord, but make sure it's done in love, yeah. in joy, yeah. in peace, yeah. in long. Don't make me a cake, Annie, if you're mad at me. <laughs> now, not, Crystal says, uh, Jamie says, still make him one. <laughs> I was gonna say that too, Jamie. You beat me to it. We'll take the tamales and we'll talk later. <laughs> and I really feel like the Lord dealt with me about this, guys. About and, and go back to the beginning scripture, Pastor Jamie. This is the very first slide. And, and look, look at what he said. In verse, the last verse, 35, the very, very end sentence. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers. We're all ministers, Diane, right? We've been saying that. Lori said that Sunday when she taught, when she preached a little bit, right? I say she preached. When she preached, Lori, she said, every one of us in here are ministers. Yeah. So every, if we're all ministers, then I ask you spiritually, not literally, but spiritually, are there pomegranates and are there bells in your life? But watch this, Mary. There's a lot of churches who have pomegranates, but they don't have bells. And what I mean by that is you can go to a church, Diane, that loves you, but they don't let the spirit flow. There's a lot of quiet churches in town. They're very quiet when you go in their services. And you say, man, but I feel a lot of love here. But the spirit don't move. So you know what you have? You have pomegranates, but you don't have no bells. And what happened to Aaron when there's no bell? There is no life. And that's why you can go to a church and it'd be dead as a doorknob because there's no bells ringing. Are y'all getting, are y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why you say, Pastor, we're loud in this church. Why are we loud? Because we're ringing the bells. Why do y'all speak loud in tongues? Because we're ringing the bells. Why do y'all pray for the sick? Because we're ringing the bells. Why do you cast out devils? Because we're ringing the bells. Why do y'all prophesy? Let Scott come and sing and prophesy. Because we're ringing the bells. Amen. But even in the midst of the bells, we got to make sure we have the pomegranates. Yes. we got to have the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Now, I'll tell you one thing, Diane, for me, the bells come naturally to me. It's the pomegranates I got to work on. Because I'm not always loving. Come on, somebody. It got quiet now. What happens with all the amens? I'm not always patient. <laughs> I forgive you, Crystal. I'm not always faithful. I'm not always kind. But I, you know I'm always kind to you. You better stop. <laughs> but what I have, I got to have a pomegranate and a bell. Watch this. Go with me to 1 Corinthians, Jamie, chapter 12. Go back to one other chapter. First Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 11. Go ahead, Pastor Jamie, because of time. Look what this says. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I want everybody to I want everybody to put everything down. If you got something in your hand, put it down. I need your help. Okay. Look at the screen. I know you're writing notes, you can come back in a minute. So, are y'all ready? For one is given the word of wisdom. So, number one, put one finger up. We got the what? Word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Number two, 
the word of knowledge. To another, faith by the same spirit. That's what? Three. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. That's what? Four. To another, the working of miracles. That's? To another, prophecy. That's? Go ahead, Pastor Jamie. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit working all these things, distributing to each one eventually. How many gifts do you have? And how many fruits of the spirit did I say you have? We got them all. But the thing, my, my point is this. If you want God to use you in all nine gifts, then you need to walk in all nine fruits. <laughs> if you want God to use us in nine gifts, then let us ask the Lord to give us nine fruits. That's why it's a struggle. It is. My, my, I'm not trying to tell you to. I'm not trying to tell you to work. What I'm trying to tell you is this: is that if you're going to walk in the Spirit and you're going to let God use you. Make sure you walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Because we can be gifted people, Michael, without love. And I want our church to be a church that operates in love. Do we want to love people? Yes. Do we want to be kind to people? Yes. But we also want the bells. We want the Spirit to move. We want the Spirit to... That's why if somebody's... If, if, if Brother Jacob's praying for you and, and he's being mean to you, then you let me know. Because you know what that means? That means he's not giving pomegranates away. And if he's going to be a minister, he needs to walk in what? The pomegranates, the fruits of the spirit. I keep saying pomegranates but because I, I want you to get the point of my message. If Pastor Jamie's over here prophesying to you, he's prophesying doom and gloom, and you're going to die, you're going to get sick, you know, your cat's going to get ran over, you know what? Then he's preaching. He's, he's, he, he may have a bell, but does he have a pomegranate? And God wants us to have both, you guys. We don't want just spells. We don't want just gifts without the pomegranate, the fruit in our lives. I close with one scripture. 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 16 through 14. Yes. Yes, you may. Yes. And we have a dead church. That's right. But we're not walking in the body of Christ. That's why you can't have a dead church. We gotta have a live church, right? Remember, if the priest wasn't walking, if the priest is walking, you're gonna hear ding 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 ding. But if you don't hear that, then that means the priest dropped dead. So if we're all priests then we should all be ringing bells in here. But if, we're, but if we don't hear no bells, then we have a dead church. And that's my point. You can go to a, you can go to a church that's dead. They don't operate in, you know, there's a lot of churches who don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Y'all know that, right? They don't prophesy. They don't speak in tongues. I'm just going to say it, Diane. I didn't want to, but I'm going to say it. They don't prophesy. They don't speak in tongues. They don't allow you to raise your hands. What, they don't have bells. They have fruit. They may love you unconditionally. They may be nice to you, Michael. They may buy you a new game, Michael, a new TV, Michael. Lord, bless them. Right? But you say, it's a loving church. But there's no bells. And you have to have bells. Why? Because if you're going to minister, as a minister, you have to have bells and pomegranates. Bells and pomegranates. And, and, I, and, I, and I feel like we, we, we need to make sure, ch church, that we operate in both. Yeah. See, before I came to Grace, now I was saved for a long time, Diane, for a long time. Went to my church. Before I, before I understood Grace, I was already a Christian for 10 years. I had a lot of bells. But my pomegranates were missing like ornaments off of a tree. Because <laughs> I preach it in hell back, in hell back right? 
I tell you how much I love you, but then I'll be like, she's an old, dirty dog. We need to get right with the Lord. <laughs> right? Didn't have no mercy for nobody. It's, it's funny because whenever we fail, we want mercy. When other people fail, we judge them. Can I make some of you? Ma- make, uh, that's why you got to be patient with your kids. Because you look back at your own life and you're like, I used to make some of them same crazy mistakes. Your kids are growing up. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to fail. I was telling somebody th- yesterday, I was like, all you can do is love them. Pray for them and talk to them. Yes. And be an example. Talk to them. Say, hey, you know, I used to do that. But but the thing is this, is that we always we always want mercy for ourselves, but we never want to give mercy. Right? See, Diane, our motives are always pure. But when somebody else does something, we always question their motive. You know, Hector can say, why did you talk to me like that? And Diane can say, well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But if Hector talks to Diane like that, Hector, Hector may get slapped and beat. <laughs> right? I'm picking on Diane, but my point is this. Diane will not question her motives, but she will question Hector's. My point is this. We always want mercy for ourselves. We always have the pure motives, and somebody else is always at fault. No, I meant good. Yeah, you pissed me off, but I meant good. Right? But, so you're going to tell them the way it is. But the point is, is that we all need to be merciful yes. to one another. The last verse. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all that you do be done with love. Amen. Now watch this. Look at the, look at the chapter. Look at the top of the screen. It's 1 Corinthians 16, is it not? And we just read about the gifts of the Spirit in what? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So Paul just talked about prophesying, speaking in tongues, right? That word of knowledge, all that stuff we read, right? And then he ends his letter. The same letter, Diane, that he talks about prophesying, speaking in tongues, he ends it by saying, everything you do, what, what is everything? Everything I just wrote about, every all the prophesying you're doing, speaking in tongues, all of those things that you're doing, let it all be done with love. What is Paul saying? I close. Paul saying this: Don't have the bells without the pomegranates. Are y'all blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. I'm done. I'm gonna let you go. I bless myself. Thank you, Lord, for your work tonight. Amen. Why don't we stand tonight and I'm going to let you go. That was a good Bible study. I, f- I felt it was a good Bible study. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight. Is there any prayer requests tonight before we go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Viola. Okay, Crystal, I saw your hand go up. Okay, Toya, right, you said her name was? Okay, yes, Tammy. Miss Rose, thank you. Deborah, yes. Anybody else? Yes, let's continue to pray for that, that people will come. We're going to ask everybody, can, we're going to, uh, everybody, I know you're probably been asking, are we still going to be asking everybody to wear a mask? Yes, continue to come in with the mask, uh, and uh, we're just going to, if, if any, y'all don't hear anything from us, it's because nothing's changed, okay? So keep doing what we're doing. I, I say that because I feel like we're in a very little church, amen? So we need to keep practicing what we're doing. I want all of y'all to stay healthy, amen? Uh, uh. Lily's got a prayer for Marcus. Amen. I see on fa- I see on Facebook. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Jamie's family again, like I said. Amen. And I pray for my aunt. 
My aunt's been in pain with her leg, but uh, she's doing okay. Amen. But that's to be expected. All right, and uh, let's let's uh, continue to lift up the body. Is Grandpa gonna have his surgery? Did they say anything about the feeding tube? Are still working on it? Okay, I just thought I would ask. All right, well let's pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all those that are here and all those that are watching online. Father, I pray, Lord, for my brothers and my sisters right now, Lord. I ask you, Father God, that you would help us, Lord, to not only just hear the word today, Lord. I don't want us, Lord, as your people to just walk away from this Bible study and say that was just another good Bible study. It, it was insightful to, to know these things. No, Lord, I want us to apply these things to our life, Lord. I want us to pray and I want us to seek you, Lord, throughout the week, throughout the month, Lord, the, as, the, as the years continue and we, and we worship you and we walk with you, Lord, that you would help us to walk in, in the bells, and not only in the bales, Lord, but in pomegranates, that our life would radiate the, the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, Lord. Lord, we not only have love, but we have power. We have authority living within us, Lord. And, Lord, we want to ring those bells, Lord, but we want to do it in love. We want to do it in patience and kindness, Lord. So help us today, Lord. Because without you, Lord, we can do nothing. Lord, they're not our fruit. They're your fruit. They are the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. They are not the fruits and the gifts of Larry. So move me out of the way, Lord. Just let me be a vessel. Let me be the vine. Let me be the branch, Lord, that you can flow through tonight, Lord. Lord, I lift up, Lord, for Viola today. Lord, I pray, God, you would just touch her, Lord, right now, Father God. Lord, I just pray for total healing in her body right now. God, continue to move in her mighty power, Lord. Let your power flow through her in Jesus name Lord I command kidneys and everything to begin to function the way they're supposed to function Father in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord I pray for Crystal Scrantoya Lord right now Lord I pray for open doors God Lord I know when your word says Lord that if one door closes you'll open another one Lord and you can open doors that no man can shut and you can shut doors that no man can open so Father God I'm believing you for an open door Lord for a bountiful blessings in her life let her experience your goodness, Lord. And God, when she sees that door open, she's going to know it's you, Lord. And it's going to draw her closer to you, to know you, and to desire and hunger after you, Father God. And Lord, we, play, we pray, Lord, for, for Annie's prayer request, Lord, and for Gabriel, Lord. I pray, Lord, you lift them both up, Lord, right now, Father God. Strengthen them, Lord. Whatever they need, whatever they're going through, Father God, I'm believing you to touch them, Lord. I'm believing your healing virtue hands to begin to be laid on them right now, Father God. And you're going to move in their life, Lord. Lord, you paid a price for them to be free, to be, to be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. So we command whatever's in their life, Lord, that's bothering them or whatever it is to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord. We pray for Jamie's grandma as well, Lord, for the family. Lord, continue to comfort them. Continue to be with them, Lord. I know, God, that you're there with them, Lord. Give her peace, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord, for her life. And, Lord, we just give her to you, Lord. We, we know that you are better, she's better off in your hands, Lord. And we know you're taking care of her, Lord. Lord, you're just letting her feel your love, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, God. And we just thank you for it in Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray for every person that needs to come back to church, Lord. We command that every church will be, every chair will begin to be filled. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, Lord, that they're coming back to church from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that right now, Lord, you're putting a hook in their mouth, God, and you're drawing them back to you, Lord. They're not going to be able to sleep at night, Lord, because they feel you tugging at their heart, Lord. Lord, teach us not to forsake the assembly of the gathering of the saints, Lord, for without you, Lord, in the body of Christ, we can't function, Lord. You have not called us to be lone ranger Christians, Lord. You've called us to be a part of the body. And, Lord, we need one another. Help us to realize that today. And we give you the praise and the glory. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, for Kyle's mom right now, Lord. I see a prayer request. Lord, we lift up Kyle's mom to you, Father God. I believe in you, God, to touch her, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you pulled her through that surgery, God. And I believe in you, Father, to give her a very speedily recovery. Lord, right now, Lord, from this church house, Lord, we just send your healing power to wherever she's at, God. 
Lord, let her experience the power of your presence like never before. God, I believe in you, God, that she's going to be a miracle, Lord, and that all glory and praise goes to you, Lord. By your stripes, Kyle's mom is healed, and we thank you for it, Lord. Strengthen Kyle, Lord. Encourage his faith, Lord. Remind him, Lord, that he is never alone, for you are always with him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Church, I love you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Don't forget to set your clocks forward.